Welcome to the Old Brother Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Smith. Alongside me, as always, is my brother from the same mother, Mike Smith. How's it going, Dan? Hey, man. Another week. Another week, and, you know, since you left here, hmm. it's there's two seasons now. There's winter, there's summer in New England. <laughs> there's no spring. Wow. It just went from 60 to 90. Yeah, that's a bummer because I always like the, the, the autumn and the spring. and Right. The best the lead up. time of year used to be the fall. Yeah. And we don't even really have much of a fall. It's just because it stays warm until through September. And then October, it's like, Jesus, I'm cold. So it's, it's June 20th, 2020. Mm-hmm. And so 6 2020. And it is summer solstice, actually. So the kickoff of the summer season, actually, here. That's right. And this, uh, isn't this the longest day of the year? Or? Well, they say that, but that's not entirely else. true. No, at least not down here. We actually clock in in Florida. There's a number of other days. I think even the 17th of June is, is on record as being just as long. So Yeah, the, you have sunlight pretty late. I always remember when I lived there, it would stay light out, but I notice it more. Like when I talk to you, if we ever FaceTime, yeah, I'll say, geez, what time is it? Because it'll be dark here and it'll still be kind of sunny. Yeah, I you think know, I, if you're at the park or something or at I, Disney. I tend to be, you know, I tend to like when it gets darker earlier for the most part. But, you know, I'm also not typically out and about late at night and stuff like that. So, yeah, you know. we're opposites that way. So I find it interesting. So this this week's episode we're doing a review of the king of staten island pete davidson and yeah. you know i i just occurred to me i thought oh, it's kind of interesting tomorrow's father's day and um you know we've mentioned on previous episodes you know we lost our dad a few years back and and of course that's a huge central theme of this movie is you know pete davidson of course lost his father famously in in 9-11 Right. Uh, so I just now, kinda... also, be this movie is loosely based on mm-hmm. real life, but it's not. Right. You know, it's not real life. So the only which... thing I, the only thing I want to say to set it up is, we both we have been writing this guy for <laughs> at, least, <laughs> at least a couple of years. Like, yeah. On the, on the Pete Davidson hate train for, for like full steam ahead for quite a while. Yeah. And, you know, and that, I mean, obviously that stems very directly from, from his time on Saturday Night Live. And, and uh, you know, spoiler alert, I don't like Pete Davidson, not a fan. And, he, you know, honestly, he does not fit Saturday Night Live. He doesn't do impressions. He's not really good at sketch comedy. Um, the most he does is kind of like do a little two-bit thing during the news, and it's the others that kind of make that funny more than him. So, yeah. but, you know, I wanted to say that up front, too, just to say, okay, so, you know, going in. Yeah, full disclosure. We, right, full we, we disclosure. We haven't been fans. Not a fan. No. But I, you know, I I went into this wanting to like it. So, yeah. Anyway, so that's the full disclosure. Yeah, and and you know, there's a there was a few. There's like one character I think on on Saturday Night Live that he plays periodically, where you know he's this like drugged out kid at home. Yeah, you, you know what I'm you talking know. about. I can't think. Okay. Right. And, okay. And, and I, honestly, when that comes on, I I chuckle a little bit, but. Other than that, I, yeah, maybe, I always kind of find it awkward when he's... Maybe the first time I chuckled, but about the 10th time, I was like, yeah. is that it? No, I will say, I haven't seen his stand-up special. I think he's got a special on Netflix right now. Yeah. So I can't speak to like the stand-up Pete Davidson. So that's purely just, like I said before, it's really just based on what we've seen over the last few years of... Uh, his time on SNL. So yeah. that said, now we're looking at this feature film, Judd Apatow film, King of Staten Island. And 
came out uh, June 12th, straight on demand, video on demand. Oh, no, and, it's, uh, it's not video on demand. It's theater at home. Yeah, theater at home, right. Well, what's PVOD? I, I've seen P it billed as PVOD as well. Well, I think that's pay video on demand. Okay. You know, okay. you can get it through your cable system. It's, it's the same as pay-per-view. Right, right. But it's so, expensive. It's 20 bucks. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Yeah. And I, you don't own it. I would see that. It's not a digital. No, that, that was a little, that's a little frustrating. Like at least, and I'll even, pay, I'll even, you know, you, you can uh, upsell me a little bit. I'll pay a little bit more to own it as well. But just as a straight rental, I, that, yeah. You know, cause see, look, there's a digital double dip right there. Right. Because if I want this film now, then yeah, I'm right. going to shell out another probably 15 bucks at least. And no extras. Yeah, no extras. Well, just who knows when it gets released. Right? right. When it gets released, they might have extras to get you to double dip. Right. But, you know. Yeah, good callback to our last episode. But <laughs> Right. So, so I, let's just dive right in. And as we, we kind of talked about this off mic that, you know, we're we're – we're going to do our best not to uh, spoil and give away any major plot points or anything. We'll kind of talk, you know, the, the highlights and just sort of generally about the film. Right. And um, hopefully steer people in the direction if it's for you or if it's not for you. And, you know, doesn't mean our opinion is going to be your opinion, but like, like, just like our opinion of him on Saturday Night Live, there's some people that love, love right. him on that show. Oh yeah, he's got a, lo a lot of fans, and and I don't, you know, and I know he does stand up, and having done stand up, and you know this because, um, you were kind of hanging with me while I was doing that. That is a brutal gig, mm -hmm. and I give anyone, I I tip my hat to anyone that. Uh, wants to make a living doing stand-up, it's tough. Yeah, for sure. Well, hopefully, you know, whether you're a fan or not, you know, we hope that you'll listen through and, and kind of get our take on it. And, you know, yeah. if you're on the fence, then like you said, maybe maybe the conversation helps steer you in one direction or the other. But so, all right. So how do you want to get into it? And I will say it's, it's you know, it's not a secret. If you, if you just do a quick Google, you see that the reviews are good. And it's got yeah, I, I did not, I purposely kind of don't look for that. Yeah. When we're, you know, if it's a classic movie, obviously I know, like, this is really, because movies haven't been coming out, this is our first kind of new review, in a sense. Although we did um, the Disney movie that was fresh. Onward, yeah. And fairly new, but it had still been on Disney Plus for at least a month. This has only been out for a week or so, a little over a week. Anyway, that out of the way, you want to uh, start this one off? So I went into this, you know, with, with an open mind. And, and I went into it kind of, as you said, I went into it wanting to like the film. Yes, me too. And, and you know, just to cut to the chase, I did like the film. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> okay. I did. So, yeah. So, I did. so this will be a good conversation because we're on opposite sides here. Yeah, and I have, a, well, I mean, I have a, there's a few criticisms of it, but, you know, I don't think it's anything heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, just a few, you know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying that there's nothing good about it, but overall. But it doesn't surprise me that you would say that. I kind of expected you would just, because you're such a Pete Davidson hater. I, but you I know would, what? I'd have been shocked if you liked this film. But I, I don't blame Pete Davidson for it. He's not the one I'm going to beat up. You know, that, that, that's shock. That's a news flash. So, right there. yeah, he, he's not the one I have a problem with. So, yeah, well, we'll get into it more. And I think you'll see why Yeah, my opinion is what it is. Must, must be Action Bronson. A little <laughs> cameo, cameo role. So, you know, immediately... The, like the opening scene mm -hmm. where, you know, he's, he's driving on the highway. Right. And then he just closes his eyes and you kind of very quickly sort of understand what's going on. He's basically, 
you know, hoping to uh, get into a wreck or drive himself into a guardrail or something. Yeah. Yeah. It was, de- it, it was a suicide attempt. Right. Right. Flat out, you know? And, and I'd heard, you know, I've heard he's been doing the late night circuit uh, this last couple of weeks. He's been on every single late night show and I've, I've watched every single one of those interviews. Oh, so you've heard, you know, maybe some of the inner details that I don't. Not so much about the movie. It, it more just kind of, it was really more of an opportunity just to get to know a bit more about him as a right. person and his history a little bit, you know, and maybe, and honestly, just to see his personality outside what I'm used to, which is again, SNL. And he just is not, a good fit for sketch comedy that's just not and i and i don't say that as a knock i think it's just that's not his wheelhouse i don't think right. that, that does him any you know i think right. it does him a disservice quite frankly so having seen his performance in this film i thought yeah this i mean this fits and um but but, but, but you I, know you point out that first scene okay yeah which gets to one of the reasons that i'm not going to he prays in this film and probably going to tell people to stay away because Mm-mm. that is a very serious issue, which anybody that knows Pete Davidson knows he has kind of mental health issues, right? So here in the opening scene, he tries to commit suicide. He gets around it, and this isn't really a spoiler because it's right at, I mean, it's the opening scene, so you're going to know this in two seconds. And it's, well, it's not in the trailer, but you're going to know it in two seconds. And he opens his eyes, like you said, he closed his eyes, started to speed up as if he's heading, you know, to crash. And then he opens his eyes at the last second, swerves around it, but sideswipes somebody and causes damage and to me that sets up kind of the big issue of the movie right this mental health issue that this kid is dealing with because losing his father but Judd Apatow just teases it here and there doesn't deal with it never really gets into it that's what ticked me off most. Apatow or Apatow? Ap- you say Apatow. Ju- yeah. I say Apatow. Apatow. And Apatow. we all scream for ice cream. <laughs> and I'm a fan of his, but his last few flicks just, I mean, I liked uh, the one with Steve Carell, the 40 year old version, a virgin. Right. Um, you know, Knocked Up was okay, was pretty, you know, had some laughs. The Trainwreck was a good film. Trainwreck was, you know, again, made Amy Schumer a star. Mm-hmm. John Cena was really funny in that, showed his chops for acting, you know, in it's that. Good. Well, but, it's, um, it's interesting that you say that up front, because that is probably my, that's probably my biggest criticism of the film. I, and I told you, I started to rewatch it again today. Yeah. And, uh, or a second time, because I watched it this morning, but then, I, you know, I, I was about halfway through it again. And I wanted them to lean into the darkness more, which, yep. you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. Because as you said, it's a heavy topic. Right. That's such a central theme in, in his real life, just based Correct. on what we know about him and what he shared. Um, and, and quite frankly, it's a huge topic. Uh, right. Well, has been, but certainly right now, it's it's a tremendously important topic for, uh, especially people of his generation too. You're talking mid twenties, right. and you know, so many so many uh, younger adults around that age that are struggling with mental health. It's like one in three, one in four. The statistics, you know. But but there was another. You know, again, without giving too much away, there, there's a scene towards the, the, the beginning of the film where his mother, played by Marissa Tomei, who I thought was really good. I thought Excellent. she was. But again, I thought kind of a part that was undersold. I thought they really could have. Yes. They could have played out the relationship between those two a lot more than they did. 
watch you know, the I, trailer again. Yeah. There was more emotion in the trailer between him and Marissa Tomei than the whole movie. Yeah, and honestly, I don't really even, when you say the trailer, she doesn't even come to my mind. Yeah, but, well, watch it again. Watch the trailer again. Yeah. And you'll see it's there saying, hey, this is part of the movie, and then it's not. Yeah, I just, you know, you talk about a, a tremendous loss, right? And this, again, based on the story, he loses his father when he's seven. It's been 17 years, you know, down. And how does he lose his father? That's not a secret. No, no, he dies in a fire. Uh, right, he's a fireman. Right, exactly. And, but, but their relationship, I wanted to see that play out a lot more. And instead it became more about just their separate stories. Yes. You know, and so I thought that was kind of a missed opportunity. But the there's scene so was, many... There's so many good performances in this movie. Yeah, there are. It's a good surprise. Right? Bill Burr is excellent in it. Steals pretty much every scene he's but, in. But you know what? Even his character, I thought, could have gone to places. Definitely. Where it would have been even heavier. And I'm not that I'm looking to go into a film that's just 100% dark, but I don't know. I was kind of looking, looking for that, I think, more than the comedy. Well, that was all right under the surface all the time. I mean, J Judd Apatow makes him look like a jerk, basically, 90% of the movie. And then in the last, I literally paused the movie because I saw where he was going for the turn to, to kind of make him likable. Mm -hmm. And I paused it to see how much was left in the movie. And it was like two minutes and 30 seconds. You're talking about Bill Burr. No, I'm talking about. Oh, um, you're talking about Pete Davidson? Pete Davidson. Oh. So I pause it. I see there's two minutes left. I'm like, he can't do it. Well, see, see, I he, didn't. He can't do it. See, I didn't, I didn't find him really unlikable, you know? Well, if I know you what think, you're saying, but. Think, think of like. Yeah, I mean, this is a kid who's tattooing little kids. Yeah. There, there's a bizarre uh, robbery in the, in the middle of it that's just kind of doesn't fit. You know what? Uh, that scene, again, yeah. without giving it away, I was trying to place the pharmacist. And I could, and then I waited and watched the, the credits. And uh, do you know who that was? No, I didn't. It, it, I'm like, I recognize, and I... And then even when I knew who it was, I'm like, really? Okay, yeah, I get it was Robert Smigel. Oh my gosh. I like, oh my God. Can't I believe I missn't. missed that. Yeah. From yeah, SNL. Wow. Right. The Triumph the Insult Comic. And Comic Triumph Comic. the Insult Comic. He was with right. Conan forever. Yeah. He was the when Conan used to do the bit with the lips. Yeah, that was him. That yeah. was Robert Smigel. He's I actually very sat funny behind guy. him at a I sat behind him at a Springsteen concert one time. It's kind of funny. Really? Yeah, not funny guy. But it was Smigel. Um, but the scene that I was talking about in the beginning was he, he, Marissa Tomei's, his, you know, his mother. Yes. She tells him, you know, go try on one of your father's suits because they're going to this party, you know, for his graduation. Sister. His sister, yeah. who's played by Judd Apatow's daughter. Yeah. Who was great. She was good. She was good. Yeah. She was good. Maude, Maude Apatow. Uh, or Apatow, as you like to say. Yeah. Uh, there's a, that's, it's a very brief scene when he's out in the garage. And he has this little dialogue just by himself in the garage. Mm -hmm. And I, it was another one of those scenes I thought, uh, they really could have leaned into that yep. a little bit more. Because yep. it, was, it was actually, Davidson, I thought, performed that brief scene really well. Um, yeah, and like it could have a lot of emotion out of it, but then it just ended. Yeah. I kind of cut right to him. Yeah. Fighting with his sister because he was going to wear short shorts and a t-shirt. Right. right. Didn't it go right to that next scene? It was either that or they, they were they walking up to the, yeah, it was right around that time. But, 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 but the, you know, the burglary scene, I don't know. It just didn't make it from, it just, what was it there for? It's a pretty that's a pretty serious scene, mm -hmm. but it just didn't fit. Just, it was like he threw it in there. Well, I, think I don't it know why. I think it didn't fit because it didn't go a certain way. I think if it had gone a certain way, mm. 
then I might have been more intrigued by it because I thought, you know, that was about at the halfway point in the movie, which is typically when there's that, right, that turning right. point in the film. Right, where you hit the peak and now exactly. you're, you're on the downward slope. And, and they, it didn't really pay off. But, no. uh, uh, and again, like Bill Burr, yeah, he was great. I mean, he's, you know, he's, we've known he's had acting chops for a while with, you know, Breaking yeah. Bad and some other things he's been in. But, but again, I thought, I uh, just, uh, the, the, he wasn't used in it the way that I had expected. I thought he was going to play a, a much uh, more heavy role than he did. Right. He ended up becoming more, a much more sympathetic character than I would have thought. Well, one of the things I thought of throughout the movie, I, I, I could almost say this about maybe six or seven different characters. I would have liked to see their story instead of Pete Davidson's. You know, there was the girl, the, the Pete Davidson basically hangs out in his basement all day, smoking pot with his buddies, who were a bunch of burnouts, basically. And, but uh, there's this one girl that's in that one scene, I think. She was interesting, mm-hmm. right? I would have liked to see more of her. And yeah. I would have I would have liked to see more of his sister. I would have liked to see more of... Uh, Buscemi, Steve Buscemi's in yeah, it, Buscemi and he was a real life fireman. Did you know that? I did know that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, his character was interesting. It seemed like every character he came into contact with had a better story than him, and I don't fault him for that. I fault. Well, I guess it's partly his fault because he's listed as yeah, you know, him, one of the writers. Yeah, him, Apatow, and his friend. I guess. Um, yeah. I can't. I. I misplace his name at this point but but yeah there was a there was a really good supporting cast you know who i really liked he was really funny the african-american guy that he worked with the uh the other bus boy or waiter or whatever that ended yes. up you know they 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 kind of have that little thing about the tips and, yes uh, yes oh my god that guy see there was another underused character he was really yep. funny um, yeah, and he was just there for a glimpse. And he was so funny that whoever that that guy is, I mean, I I could look up the credits, but he and was the, really funny. That scene, that's a good point because that scene there was there was a way to make um his character. You know, I, I think his name was Scott in the movie. Yeah, is that, is that what it was? Yep, that's it. And I think it was which a is his dad's to- real his dad's real name. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. And I thought that was a way, although they showed a picture of his real dad at the end. You started out by saying this is a story about a guy losing his dad. We got none of that. Very little of that story. Yeah. Um, you know, and the and the few times they would they would touch on it and then it would just go away. It's like uh, Keep the going. first thing I thought of was, uh, I think when he's that opening scene when he's driving is just, you know comedy and tragedy. Right. How, you know you see some of these like uh, Davidson comedian you know, and he's got a lot of tragedy and darkness in life. Bill Burr same thing. Yeah, you know, that's pretty common in the comic world. But yes, so it it could have been a great blend of the two. But I just I. I, it's kind of weird to say, but I wanted more of the tragedy. Yeah, you know, and and think about like if, if I don't know, did, was this movie rated? Do they rate these home rated theater R. movies? Yeah, okay, it, it, it should have been rated R. Yeah, because there's a lot of swearing, mm-hmm. a lot of drug use. Yeah, um, some sexual uh, sexual things. stuff, yeah. which is typical for for a Judd Apatow movie, mm-hmm. but it's usually funnier. And it wasn't that funny this time. And I, I, so if you're thinking about, if your kids are like, hey, you know, I like Pete Davidson from no. Saturday Night Live. Yeah, no. no, this isn't that Pete Davidson or that venue. Right. So I would kind of steer people with kids. If their kids say, hey, I like Pete, he's on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. No, this isn't what you want to show your kids. I laughed out loud a few times. I mean, there were there were some there were some really funny scenes in it. I like I said, the his waiter friend made me laugh a couple times. Uh, the, the you know Mar- Marissa Tomei plays a uh, she's an ER nurse and a school nurse. And that scene where the kid in the school again without giving yeah. it away, 
that that was a really funny scene. Yeah, that's when she's FaceTiming with him and his sister about what yes. to do to this party. And, right. Yeah, you know, I thought that yeah. kid was pretty funny in that scene. Yeah, and um, and, and another English actor uh, or actress, this Belle Pow Powley, who she played I, his girlfriend. Yeah, you'd like yeah. never know it. Right. I mean, to not only play an American accent, but but to the Jersey. That, well, Staten Island. I mean, yeah, you know that's just uh, she was Staten a, Island's basically Jersey, I think. You yeah, know, to to a big extent, but yeah, yeah, she had the accent nailed. Well, he says what it's uh, the only place that Jersey looks down on. Yeah, that's right. That's Staten a line Island. in the movie. But she was she was great in another character where, you know, I had read I read some reviews that kind of said that she really her story. Uh, was the more prominent story in the film. I, I could see where they would say that, but but yeah, you know they could have. There's just so many different pieces they could have fleshed out more. In fact, maybe maybe it was that they had too much to write for this big supporting cast. If they had maybe trimmed that down some, yeah, you know, you know, that's a good point because sometimes less is more. And this was over two hours. Yeah, I didn't. Like, so they had plenty to me, but yeah, well, you're they right. They had plenty like, of time to deal with things, mm -hmm. and they chose. I think he was throwing a bunch of scenes against the wall, and then tried to put it together, and didn't have enough of what I think we were both looking for, which was that understory of you know how do you grow up. No, like you know, and it's we're not giving anything away by saying Pete Davidson has mental health issues because he talks about it a lot, mm -hmm. and he he jokes about it, and I think that's what I think that's the the reason people like him is is the self deprecation. You know, he's very self deprecating in his stand up. Well, he's very from honest. what I've seen, and, and you know, and, and even on SNL when he's himself, mm -hmm. you know, he's basically just himself mm -hmm. uh, on the news, and he just self deprecates for five minutes. And people, you know, that's like a a comedian's. That's one of the tools in your tool bag. You know, if if if, if you knock on somebody in the crowd, then you're gonna have to knock on yourself because to get them back, you got to self deprecate. But Again, you know, it's a kid with, you know, grew up, lost his father at a young age, is having trouble dealing with it. But I don't know. Um, we that wasn't the that wasn't the movie. That wasn't what the movie was really about. No, I, it should I, have been. Yeah, I don't know if it's like how you would. How is it built? Is it built? I get okay, comedy drama. Yeah, okay, but again. Um, there the was comedy a, comes from everybody else. Yeah, and there was a there were, like I was content. I thought there was a, a sufficient a, a amount of comedy. In fact, his uh, grandfather, his actual grandfather, has a cameo, and that, and that was a very funny scene too. I thought I don't know if you knew that was his actual. He, I didn't know it was his actual. <laughs> I know the scene you're talking about. That was funny. You and, know, he's talking about college being a waste. Yeah, and which um, is right up our alley. Pamela Adlon, uh, is that right? Do I have her name? Yeah, right? who was, who was uh, you know, she's she's had a few of her own shows. Mm -hmm. She was linked with um, Louis. She was on the show, Louis. Mm -hmm. But she did have her own show. Um, trying to think of what it was, but. I mean, you know, if, you're, if you were a fan of Pete Davidson before this, you're going to like the film. Probably. You're not, you're not, it's not going to turn you off to Pete Davidson. And and, and you won't like us. <laughs> no, but, well, but and that's one thing I wanted to say, you know, as we're doing this review is, is, you know, again, we railed on him pretty hard with Saturday Night Live, but I think it's just seeing him in this context, in, in, in this film, I just don't think that sketch comedy is really his thing. And I no. think the first one, that would say that I've heard him actually even say that, uh, you know, I'm not sure why I'm even here type of thing. And again, he has that, said that, not that he's not a funny guy, but just not in that. Some people right. just aren't that, you know, it doesn't suit his, his type of comedy. I think it's trying right. to, 
it's trying to fit a, a square peg in a round hole type of thing. Well, it's like Chris Rock. Look at Chris Rock. He was on Saturday Night Live for what, four years? Something like that? Yeah, I'm sorry, Chris, but Chris was horrible on Saturday Night Live. He's terrible. And then he's... <laughs> He's but he's, like a, he's regarded as one of the best stand-ups. He is. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great stand-up. He's funny. Mm -hmm. I'm dying to see the FX show um, Fargo. Right. Remember, he's the star. And, mm -hmm. and, and it first time seeing him kind of dramatic. So that should be interesting. But um, I don't want to get off the movie <laughs> review yeah. here. But, but um, so, you know, I mean, but I think that if you were... I mean, if you were a serious deep hater of Pete Davidson, like like way like beyond anything we've said, then yeah, I'm not sure this is. I don't. I'm not sure how this save is your twenty see. bucks. Yeah, maybe save your twenty bucks. But but if you're some you know indifferent or on the fence or something, I mean, I I, I thought it was a very sweet movie. There was some tender moments. I mean, I literally I laughed out loud. I cried a little bit. You know, I enjoyed it at the end. But reflecting on it in preparation for us talking about it, I think we've hit on the same exact thing. I, I really wanted them to go to that, 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 the drama and the tragedy much more than they did. I felt like that just got left by the wayside. And I think, I think Steve Buscemi could have played a bigger part. He was more the father figure, <laughs> you know, and he was barely in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. But there was, there was an emotion coming out of when he talked about, uh, even when he talked to Pete Davidson in the movie and when he talked to Bill Burr in the movie, the, he was kind of this father figure. He was the old man of the firehouse. I just think they could have used him more to get at some of that emotion we were looking for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I never laugh out loud, so I'm not going to criticize it you know, for, for not making me laugh out loud, but I never do. And crying's not a big uh, thing unless it's, you know, a yeah. real tear jerker, but well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm easy for that. And, and, you know, there's definitely, yeah. this definitely have moments, but you know, I, God, it's probably good that, that it wasn't anymore. I'd have been, uh, you know, in, in a puddle, but. Um, in the end, yeah. there was a lot of things to resolve at the end. And it was like, okay, let's resolve this. Let's resolve this. Let's resolve this. Didn't you feel like it was bang, bang, bang at the end? Not so much. No, not really. I mean, I see what you're saying, but, but yeah. I don't, I don't know that I felt it in the pacing so much, but, but, but I will say that, yeah, I do. I was looking at the time. Mm -hmm. um like of the film not like what time it was but i was looking to see how much how many minutes were left and i can remember looking and going oh really that's that's it like yeah. thinking there was maybe another 20 30 minutes when there was only like five right so because they needed to they needed to definitely resolve a couple of things and they they just didn't and i would not have if if it was another 15 minutes that wouldn't have bothered me at all this was two hours and 16 minutes and honestly that's a long movie and it didn't feel long to me uh, um, and i don't know if that's because you know uh, waiting to see some of these things played out a little bit more i don't know but you know i wasn't yeah, i just going, thought, oh, it's dragging on i don't think yeah that's i just thought it was too jumpy you know it was just too jumpy it just wasn't smooth again i'm laying a lot of this at judd apatow's feet because i think the story was there I think it was there to be told and it was, there was a nice arc that could have been used. And, but I just don't think he sewed it together in a way that was really helpful for Pete Davidson, the way he did with train wreck and Amy Schumer or the way he did for um, Seth Rogen, you which know, is, I mean, he basically made those guys, the, the, them stars, which is where I think they, got together because he had a which i didn't remember he had a very bit he had a cameo in well he wasn't really known but he was in train wreck uh, Who, um oh Davis. i didn't i don't remember him and that's where they met and then they kind of struck up a friendship and then eventually it led to them you know collaborating on this film and hmm. you know, they've been writing it over the last two three years so um yeah but yeah, it, it just fell fell short in, in, in a few areas. But I, again, you know, I, I, I paid 20 bucks for it. I, I'm not like, you, you know, 
pissed off or anything. I don't feel like, like I didn't get my money's worth necessarily. I just think that they could have, you know, you mentioned at the top, this theme of mental health that could have been right. explored maybe a little deeper. And think or, about how serious that issue is because Pete Davidson got yanked off the show one night because he tweets out just before the show's going on something about, I really don't want to be on this planet anymore. Yeah. And, and they, you know, they, that nobody found that funny. They sent, you know, people to look for them and, and, you know, Lauren Michaels said, okay, you're not going on tonight. You've got to get some help. And, and I yeah. think he was gone for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It so is a little serious a little, topic. And it's they a little just, all over the place. It's, yeah. little, you know, is it, is it a, is it a relationship movie with his girlfriend? Is it about him and his mom and the loss of the, is it about like, it's, it's a little bit all over. Right. Is it about a sur surrogate father? Is it about, you know, I, right. it just was too many different things. Yeah. Too many, too many storylines. It didn't do like any that. of them that good. And it's, it's a shame because there, there are a lot of good performances, albeit short ones, but yeah. a lot of people did some good work and it's just a shame that it didn't really get the job done. Yeah. But you know what? For his first, I mean, I guess this this is his first uh, starring role, right? I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I it's solid. So as far as Pete Davidson goes, the one thing I walk away from this is going, okay. I think like he, maybe this is like he's found his niche, and and it makes me actually want to check out his uh, his stand up special because honestly, yeah, I'm not I'm sure. Uh, I'm into. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing him in another movie, and I think he's more suited to that. He, he seemed, you know, uh, yeah, but you don't know, you've not, you've not seen him uh, do stand up. You, True. You can't, you can't use Saturday night live cause that's not stand up. No, I agree. But just getting a sense of his kind of humor. I just, I don't think it would be for me. I would give it a watch probably, but you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't pay 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, and th let me ask you that if, because you know, people hopefully people are looking at this and saying, "Well, should I do this? Should I don't?" I mean, would you advise people to pay twenty bucks for this? You know, I think at the end of the day, uh, a more general statement I'll make is, I'm not, I, I'm having trouble paying twenty dollars for just a video on demand movie. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. that's where yeah. I have a problem. Yeah, so I don't, I, I don't want that to, I think, yes. I think quite honestly, if for no other reason than all the, all the crap that I've, I've given Davidson over the last couple of years, I say, you know what, dish out some of your money, you're stuck home. Where are you going to go? You know what I mean? Yeah. You can watch it without a mask on, you know, and sure. I, I, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's, yeah, it's worth 20 bucks. But again, I would argue that $20 for a video on demand movie, mm, 15 no. i got no problem like that to me seems about right like a 14.99 price point for something i, like I that. would say wait save your money rent it for four bucks i wouldn't buy this movie unless it was somehow reworked in a director's cut maybe where yeah but i, or, I don't or think if I it would. had if it had tons of extras if it had yeah. a commentary i would definitely buy it i would definitely and, buy it and again watch the trailer Mm -hmm. Because I think you'll see a couple of things in the trailer that didn't make it yeah. that should have made it. It's got a good soundtrack too. The music throughout is pretty nice. And yeah, uh, so, and you know, it's not it's, for you you wouldn't be you're you're not hip enough for that music. Right, right. It's more of a hip hop. I mean, it starts with kind of like a hip hop thing and yeah, there's a sprinkling of a little, well, there's actually a little bit of everything. The go goes, there's some Sinatra, like there's a lot of stuff going on there. But yeah. But uh, but it's a good soundtrack. So for those right. who are into, into movie soundtracks, but but yeah, I would much rather have had the opportunity to own it. So I wouldn't argue with the you know maybe you wait, you know get it on a cheap rental or something. But um, yeah, I don't feel like I was like swindled out of my money or anything like that. Again, I just have more of an issue paying that for any on demand movie right. that I don't own at the end of it. I, I used to always make the the joke, you know, the movie was so bad, I got up and walked out and, you know, yeah. I was in my living room. Right, walked out of your own house. 
Yeah, I think some comics have said it about, yeah, I, the movie was so bad, I got up and walked out, and I was on a plane. <laughs> you know, that's the joke. But Well, I gave it, when it ended, I gave it four stars on Voodoo. And, hmm. you know, the, it, it's, it's got a little over, I think, a 70% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which is yeah, really good. I, I would have whacked it at about two. Yeah, I would that, say that's, two. two's not, two's a little harsh folks and, and really we'll meet in the I'm, middle and call it a three <laughs> i i really give you know most of that to the supporting cast that i really did like and even the kids the, the, the little kids in it were were good little actors you know yeah i can't imagine it was easy for him to uh well in fact i had heard i think in one of the interviews uh that i was watching yesterday with apatow uh he was talking about yeah, he was pretty a- anxious up until like Davidson literally first day on set. He goes up to him. He said, "No, I'm serious. You should have got someone else to do this." What and, to uh, act in it? Yeah, but then he just I guess he settled in. And yeah, it's pr- I mean, it's such a personal story. It's his. Yeah, there's a lot riding on on this too for him. You know, professionally. It's funny because you know it, in the movie he's being teased a lot by. Not only, you know, his sister keeps saying, you know, you know, be better. And and, and then there's a conversation in the car between Bill Burr and Marissa Tomei. Right. And he's listening. They don't realize they think he's asleep or listening to music. He's listening in. Yeah. And they're saying he just has no self-confidence. And that's kind of Pete Davidson in real life. I think. I don't know. You know, I don't know. But. Yeah, what he well, puts I, out there. Right. It seems, uh, again, I told you, he's doing the late night circuit. And, you know, he seems like, um, you know, you never really truly know, right? I mean, uh, only he knows. But right. he seems like he's, he's a, a lot uh, more well-adjusted at the moment than maybe he's been for quite some time. So, yeah. you know, yeah, I, can, I can empathize with, with, with that struggle. So I know. will say one thing. Uh, I was getting ready. I was excited about this Kate Beckinsall uh, what's, series. What's with you in the names? It's Beckinsale. I, I, I know. Be- Beckinsale. Beckinsale, Beckinsale. I don't know. What is that? I, lo- I like to say in my own way. <laughs> You're so fancy. Uh, <laughs> but I remember there was a series, I think it was called Widow on mm-hmm. Amazon Prime. I was looking forward to watching it. Mm-hmm. And we're both hockey fans and I'm watching a Rangers game and there he is making out with Kate Beckinsale. And I'm like, oh yeah. One of his, um, one and of that his killed, things. Yeah. That killed like, See? I, I couldn't watch. Well, hopefully this, you know, again, uh, if nothing else for you, I'm hoping it's dialed back the uh, dislike a little bit where you can separate again, like, you know, putting him into a sketch comedy scenario just doesn't work. Right. But I could see him doing more films like this easily. Yeah. And it's interesting because here it is, you know, kind of loose based on a true story, Mm -hmm. but the way they resolved it had nothing to do with how he resolved it. And obviously he got into stand up at, at a very early point Mm -hmm. in his, but you know, that didn't, doesn't come into the story at all no i mean i could see him taking the route of like adam sandler where he's doing you know does a few of the goofy comedies but then he does some some dark some you know good dramatic pieces and so who knows i mean it makes me curious to see like where he'll go next film wise so he's in i think the next justice league oh no suicide, he's in suicide squad, squad. Yeah, yeah which yeah. he kind of poked fun at he said ironically i'm in <laughs> suicide squad yeah yeah so I didn't it, like the first it, one so that would be a tough sell for me yeah that i don't know what i thought do that was an that. awful movie but yeah we're not talking about suicide squad so. no but we did touch on it so the, I, you know I, I think it's worth a watch the twenty dollars that's a little bit of a struggle on the price point, so you know that's a decision that everybody needs to make for themselves right um like you if know. you're a fan you you you're not gonna have a problem no way no if you're a Pete Davidson fan, it's kind of a no brainer yeah but i i I would say to parents, you know definitely not small kids, no way no again rated r you know like at least. 
for good I mean, reason. Know, wait, eight, 18 or 16 or over or whatever. But I, you know, most of, of his movies, Judd Apatow, I would not recommend to kids anyway. So, although I think most of his have been PG, mm-hmm. this one went a little further. A lot of swearing, yeah. a lot of constant drug use, mm-hmm. constant. Yeah. So uh, I would be, you know, I, I would put those out there. So at the, so bottom line is it's, it's a, it's a comedy drama, which is not enough drama in this case. Yeah. And I think you and I would have <laughs> any other film would be like, where's the comedy? Where's the comedy? Right. I, I wanted them to explore the darker side of this story more than they did. So that, that's, yeah, I, I think we're thing. closer in agreement to this than maybe it would seem I've, I'm, I, you know, I think I'm a little harsher, but I think yeah. we're closer to what the problems were with the mm-hmm. movie. So you'll have to decide for yourself folks, but. And please, if, if you do see it or you've seen it, yeah. let us know. If you don't agree with us, let us know. If you do agree with us, if you agree with Dan and think, yep. Uh, yeah. I'd hit pay us 20 up. bucks or hit if us, you agree with drop me. us, drop us a line or hit us up on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We got YouTube channel out there that you can subscribe to and like our videos out there. We publish all of our full length uh, podcast episodes on YouTube and uh, on social media. We're O B podcast, which is O H B as in brother podcast. And And if you have any recommendations about yeah, you want us to to watch and, and, and give you our opinion, if that means anything to you or joke about it or whatever, yeah. please let us know. Preferably not a $20 video on demand <laughs> film. Uh, not going to be too eager to do that anytime soon, but they got to come down on that price point just a hair. Yeah, that's a little steep. That's tough. But it's theater at home. Yeah. Well, there you go. Hey, listen, we didn't, you know, there was really no railing on Pete Davidson on this episode. No. So he came and, out and pretty uh, unscathed, I'd say. I would say, and, and I would like to see another movie with him in it. I would as well. You. I'm actually looking for it now. Again, Suicide Squad. There's another one, I believe, that he's, that's in the works. I, I, I can't think off the top of my head what it is. But, but yeah, I would definitely look forward to, to see, particularly a dramatic piece, honestly. Yeah, I, would much I think he could see. pull it off. I do too. I mean, think and, of uh, Sandler, like Punch Drunk Love when we first saw that. And right, or Uncut Gems, Uncut which is Gems, a new, yeah. new one. And I said to you up front, I didn't like the movie, but I'm not going to beat up Pete Davidson for it. So yeah, total I shocker. think I stuck to my... That would have been easy to do because, you know, again, we, we don't have the best history with him. But yeah, I got right. no problems with his performance in this at all. It, for us, it's not about Pete Davidson. It, it's really just the shortcomings of... of I guess the writing a little bit, if you will. Well, that's it for this week, folks. Go check out King of Staten Island, video on demand, or don't, (laughs) whatever your call. (laughs) But let us know. Yeah, but definitely let us know what you think. And uh, I like the idea of, you know, if you've got a suggestion for a film that you want us to check out and review, be happy to do that. Until then, I've been your host, Dan Smith, alongside my brother from the same mother, Mike Smith, and we will... See you again next week. Bye, everyone.